Hello, 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 everyone. Um, welcome, 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 welcome to our um, Q&A for this month. Uh, this month, we've been talking about um, summer safety tips. Um, and I'm so happy that I have everyone joining me today. Um, so for this summer, we went through um, the shortened versions of my tips. Um, so I only gave three tips for each. And I talked about um, sun safety, water safety, and then um, ways to prevent bug bites. And um, I'll expand on some of those things today. I'm so glad once again to have you join me. As I go along, be sure to write your questions in the box so that I can answer them for you. If you are unable to um, write any questions in the box, if you know me personally, I have my cell phone. You can text me your questions. If you um, are not able to send me a message personally, you can reach out on any of my social media platforms. I will be checking them throughout this discussion so that I make sure that I'm not missing any of your questions. So once again, this Q&A is on um, summer safety tips. Uh, so I'll start off with the, the three that I talked about first, which is for the sun safety tips, which is basically when I said avoid the sun, it basically means at the height of the day between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. when the sun is highest in the sky, um, that's the, the time that you really want to avoid being out in the sun for long periods of time. And, you know, if you are going to be out in the sun, which most it's summertime, most of us want to be outside, um, make sure you're putting on sunscreen at least SPF 15 or higher. I tend to recommend the ones that are like 30 or higher. Um, and that's basically because usually you kind of use the number to gauge how long you're going to be um, exposed to the sun for. So 15 is like 15 minutes, 30, 30 minutes. 50, 50 minutes or an hour. So it's that kind of thing. So basically we want you to make sure that you're um, staying safe, wear a wide brim hat, UV sunglasses. And all of these things are really just to make sure that you are protecting your skin. So you have beautiful, fabulous skin as you're um, getting older and also to minimize the chances of getting skin cancers. And I, I know skin cancer, especially in communities of color, a lot of times we don't really worry about those that because we feel like, oh, you know, we don't get those things often, but that is not the case. Uh, we do end up, you know, uh, patients of color can get melanoma, can get skin cancers. So it's not just for fair skinned individuals. It is for us that are darker skinned also make sure you're wearing sunscreen, make sure you're wearing those wide brim hats. And if you have to use, um, you know, when I say avoid the sun, stand in the shade if you can, um, do what you can to make sure that you're being safe. Okay. Uh, and then going into week two, I did discuss about water safety. With water safety, the major thing is that drowning is really the leading cause of death in, in children, especially for ages one to four. Um, but we want to make sure that not just young children, but adolescents also, and um, children that are 14 years of age, basically teenagers, you want to make sure that they're being safe as they go out to these pool parties and things like that. So being attentive, so paying attention um, and making sure that if you decide that you're going to use a life jacket, you want to use a U.S. Coast Guard approved life jacket, not a floaty, um, and then avoid alcohol use for you adults that plan to swim and watch or supervise your child swimming because that basically slows your reaction time, decreases your inhibitions, um, and in essence can put your child um, at risk. So you wanna make sure you're being safe. If you have a pool at home um, for all residential pools, you wanna make sure that you have a four-sided fencing around the pool, close supervision of young children um, whenever they're in or near the water. Um, if, they're, if you're able to provide your children with some swimming lessons, um, so just making sure that you're taking all the safety measures to, to ensure that your child is protected from drowning. Um, because again, you know, the, the risk of drowning for infants, it's high in bathtubs. 
Um, and then as, as you get older, then larger bodies of water, like the pools or lakes and things like that. So you want to make sure that you are doing what, what is necessary to, to safeguard your children. The other thing that I wanted to mention too, is that, you know, drowning doesn't necessarily mean that, that you're in the water flailing around, screaming for help. Oftentimes what happens is, that a child can, a person, any person can drown basically within a minute. And oftentimes it's very silent. It's quiet, quick process. So they just go under the water. And, you know, if you are not being attentive, if you're not paying attention, um, then you might miss it. Uh, and so I just encourage you all to, to be attentive, be attentive. If you can get, like I said, if you can get your children swimming lessons, that really is the best thing to do so that they can protect themselves. But for you adults out there, and if you don't know how to swim, guess what? It's time to learn. Try it. Do your part. Learn how to swim that you can help to protect your children also. Okay. And I know some of us, it's like, especially for us women of color, sometimes it's like, oh, I'm not messing up my hair. I'm not having to deal with that pool water all the time. I don't, you know, I understand because I've been there, but you want to make sure that you are doing what's necessary for, for your own safety and also for the safety of your children. So if you are willing to get them swimming lessons, why don't you join in in the process and get yourself lessons also? I would really encourage that. Um, and so for those of you who are just joining me, um, I see one question here. Uh, so you shouldn't drink wine and then go in the pool. That is correct. Um, and I don't know how to swim and I don't trust anybody. So you know what, when it comes to that, um, the drinking wine and then going in the pool, like I mentioned before, the, the, the issue is that, you know, when you drink alcohol, that your inhibitions are delayed or slowed. Um, and your ability, your reaction time is also um, decreased. So if you are in a situation where you're in a pool or you're in a lake or something like that, and you then need to assist someone else, your ability to assist them is now decreased quite a bit. And so that's why we don't typically recommend, you know, any kind of alcohol when you're supervising children in a pool. Now, as an adult, you know, I would say use your discretion. Um, some people can have one drink and it affects them dramatically and other people, you know, one drink is okay, but the rule of thumb and the recommendation from the governing bodies in medicine is no alcohol when you're swimming. Um, and then the not trusting anyone. Um, so if you don't trust anyone, that means you need to go learn how to swim if you don't know how to swim, because you need to be able to care for yourself while you're in the water. And if you are someone that have children, that you're able to take care of your children also. So again, for those of you who are just joining us, we're talking about summer safety tips. I've just gone through the safety tips that I discussed before about um, sun safety and then um, water safety. And the other thing that I had spoken about before was um, basically how to protect yourself from getting all these bug bites and mosquito bites. Some of us are really sensitive to those things and end up having these welts and, you know, things that pop up because of the bug bites. So in order to minimize the chances of you getting bug bites, you want to make sure that you are covering up exposed skin in times when there's going to be a lot of bugs around. So if in the evening or if you're going to be around a kind of collections of water, you want to make sure that you're wearing DEET, um, uh, insect repellent, excuse me. Um, and you want to, if you're covering up, you want to make sure, like, let's say you're going hiking in the woods or something like that, you want to tuck tuck your pants into your socks so that there's no exposed areas for ticks or anything like that to go into and wear long sleeve shirt. And I know it's hot. So you're like, oh, how are you telling me to go put on some long sleeves and cover up in this hot weather? I get it. It's hot, but 
do you want them bug bites or you want to be protected? So what I would recommend is if you, if that's the, the issue, wear a lighter fabric, wear breathable fabrics so that um, even though you might be sweating a, a bit, it's a breathable fabric um, and tuck those things in the socks, like I said, and wear a long sleeve, make sure you're wearing the insect repellent. And then the two things, the sunscreen, you want to make sure you're applying it before insect repellent. So you still want to wear your sunscreen, you want to be out in the sun. But if you're going to apply sunscreen and then insect repellent, you tend to want to wait about 20 minutes before you put um, the insect repellent on. And the reason for that is that you don't want to block the effectiveness of the sunscreen. Um, so in essence, what happens is if you put them on back to back, the ingredients that are in the um, insect repellent can actually block the effectiveness, effectiveness of the sunscreen. So it may not work as long or may not work as well. So wait for about 20 minutes and then put the insect repellent on. Um, and then for some of us, we have like, you know, the pots that we like to plant things in or things like that that's in the backyard. Um, and when it rains, like it did yesterday here in Georgia, when it rains, sometimes, you know, water collects in those pots and then they're just sitting there. And those kind of things are breeding ground for mosquitoes. So you want to make sure that if you do have those kind of things in your backyard, before you go out there and sit and enjoy the outdoors, empty those pots, throw that water out. So you want to get rid of those sitting bodies of sitting water um, because, you know, it's going to attract um, and be a breeding ground for things like mosquitoes. Now, if you get a bug bite, because sometimes it happens, you take all these um, precautions and you think that, uh, you know, OK, I don't have to deal with any bugs. You know, I don't I, I won't have this as an issue. And you think that will be the case, but you get bitten anyway. So if you get bitten um, or if your child gets bitten by bugs, the first thing you want to do is if, if they're very itchy, you can use over-the-counter 1% hydrocortisone cream. Um, that will help to decrease the swelling and the itching. You want to apply it right away or some people like to use the over-the-counter Benadryl cream because, again, it's, for, it's an anti-itch cream or calamine. Um, cream, those things are tend to be effective for some people if you are not one of those people that have like major reactions to bug bites. So those are the things that I would say first, especially if the bug bites are only one or two. Um, so I would uh, try one of those things. Now, if, if you go out and, you know, some of you get eaten by these bugs and you have bug bites all over the body, all, all over the arms, all over the legs, then there's so many that applying a uh, cream to it becomes problematic uh, or it's so much. So in those cases, if it's very itchy, I would recommend doing like a, again, an over-the-counter antihistamine, but like a pill. So a Zyrtec, a Claritin, one of those things. They tend to work for 24 hours. So you don't have to keep taking it, unlike Benadryl. Um, so you can just take the antihistamine um, and then you can still apply the cream to the spots, you know, if you feel like the antihistamine isn't sufficient. Those are the things that I would do for kids that are, um, or even adults that you're like, I'm trying to go to bed and these things are itching me and I just can't take it. Then, you know, at nighttime, then you can use a little bit of Benadryl. But um, I would say, I would, Benadryl would not be my go-to. It wouldn't be the first thing that I do. I, you know, again, if it's nighttime and you're trying to get rest and you realize that you just can't deal with it, with all the itching, then absolutely you can use a little bit of Benadryl. If you have an infant, you need to check with your doctor. I'm not recommending just any, you know, giving any child um, Benadryl. Check with your doctor first. But um, for us adults, it's, you know, you can take over the counter Benadryl. Um, now let's say that you've done the cream, you've done, you know, the antihistamine, these things are getting larger, they're getting itchier, they're getting more bothersome. If that's the case, what I would then recommend is try to get in to see your doctor. 
if you can't get in to see your doctor, this is one of the situations where I would say that um, telemedicine is actually use very useful because you can call in um, and you know have a tele visit depending on what your insurance is or um, what the availability is. Have a telemedicine visit. Be prepared to show them the the affected areas. So show the affected areas so that they can then go ahead and prescribe something. Um, a little bit stronger than the over-the-counter options that I've just recommended. So even with those prescription medicines, they may still tell you, um, take some over-the-counter Zyrtec, take some over-the-counter Claritin. So it's not to say that um, those things won't, aren't, you know, that you're paying someone just to tell you that. It's just that those things do work really well. And like I said, they work for 24 hours. So um whatever the prescription medicine that you get, if they tell you to take one of those, then you take it in conjunction. If they don't, then just ask, you know, if you're unsure, ask before you go ahead and take it. But that's what, those are the things that you do before, um, if you do end up getting a bug bite um, that you have a reaction to. If those bug bites start oozing pus, that's a whole nother category. You need to get seen. Um, if you have tick bites and you 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 were hiking, you realize you got home and it's like, oh, there's a tick on me and you are concerned um, and you go to Dr. Google, which, you know, y'all shouldn't do that. But you go to Dr. Google and now you see all these different things and you start to freak out. You got a tick bite. So get seen. You can, again, do telemedicine or, you know, so or go in to see your doctor if you're able to, but get seen. Um, and part of that, depending on which part of the country you're located, you know, there are different types of ticks that carry different things. So that's why I'm saying to get seen. If you pull the tick off of you, um, make sure you save the tick. You know, uh, usually we want to see that or want to know what type of a tick it is. Some of you who are hiking enthusiasts, you are already familiar with what type of tick you may have pulled off of you, but save the tick. Usually we want to see it because we want to know specifically what type of tick it is and the likelihood of it carrying different things like Lyme disease or other things. So um, like I said before, if you are going out and you are concerned about any form of bug bites, make sure you're wearing insect repellent, make sure you're covering yourself up. Okay. So those were the, those were the topics that I talked about and I um, welcome you all to ask questions regarding any of these. And I'm going to start um, monitoring all the different social media platforms in case anyone have questions for me. I do want you guys to feel free to go ahead and ask. You can um, send me a message at Amize Health on Instagram, on um, Facebook, or um, on excuse me, on um, Twitter. If you have my personal number, you can send me a message on my um, phone. And if you are on online, on YouTube, you can absolutely just send me a message in, in the box here. So I welcome all questions. And if it is a question that I am unable to answer for one reason or another, I will absolutely either try to get that question answered for you and I can circle back to you or I can tell you where to get the answer from. Okay. I just want to make sure that um, we're having a productive, informative time today. Okay. So what questions do you all have for me this evening? Again, for those of you who are just joining, we are talking about summer safety tips, water safety, sun safety, and avoiding those pesky little bugs. Okay. So what questions do you guys have? I welcome questions now. Otherwise, I will continue to talk about all the different things that I have prepared to talk about today. So I'm just checking the box, um, our chat box, and seeing whether or not you guys have posted any questions for me here. Okay. And one of the things, um, while I wait for you all to, to post questions, one of the things that I um, wanted to kind of mention is 
If you are someone that is able to take a CPR class or learn CPR, please do it. Even if you don't save your child's life, or like if your child isn't in danger, you might end up saving someone else's child's life just from knowing CPR. So if you have the ability to do it, do it. And even children can learn. I'll say, I te- I've been teaching my daughter Children can learn how to do it too. They don't, you know, even they can learn. So I would encourage you if you have the ability to do that yourself or you're thinking about it for your children, it is a great tool to have in your toolbox um, knowing how to do CPR. Okay, what questions do you all have for me? And then one of the, the as, as I continue to wait for questions to pop up, I want to make sure that I mentioned the importance of staying hydrated um, in, this, in the summer. It's important because you want to make sure that we are avoiding um, heat exhaustion or heat stroke, which are two things that can happen. Um, the, the temperature can get so high sometimes, and especially if we're out doing activities, sometimes we lose track of time and don't realize we haven't even had a sip. So I do encourage you, make sure you're staying hydrated. Try to carry water with you. And let me clarify this, y'all. Hydrated don't mean drink some soda. It means get some water in your system. Drink some water, okay? Um, that's the best way to hydrate. Drink some water. Stay cool. For the, you know, and I'm not saying that you can't have something else like, oh, you know, little kids love Icy Pops. They should have some water along with their Icy Pop. But you want to make sure that you you and your children are staying hydrated this summer um, and make sure that you're doing things to prevent overheating. The kids are outside playing, you know, they're kids are playing baseball, soccer, they're running around. You want to make sure that they have their water bottles with them, Drink, making sure that they are hydrated. You do not want them to suffer from dehydration. Dehydration, um, severe dehydration can land you in the hospital. Um, so make sure you're staying hydrated, okay? Uh, what questions do you all have for me today? So as I continue to wait for additional questions to come in, I am going to go ahead and um, mention a few more things. And one of the things that I wanted to mention is about um, vitamin D and getting vitamin D from the sun and how important it is. Um, So most of us, and I'll say most of us, especially since COVID happened, most of us um, ended up being vitamin D deficient. And the reason for that is because a lot of us don't spend that much time outside anymore. It's uh, the kids are, a lot of kids, you know, you have to force them outside now because they want to stay inside and watch TV or be on a tablet or on a telephone or whatever the case may be. Um, And for, for some of us adults, it's just like, oh my God, it's so hot outside. I don't want to be out there. So we spend so much time indoors now. We work from home. We, you know, we do so much inside that we're not allowing, we're not getting the rays from the sun that, um, you know, that we used to get. Uh, And the, the truth of the matter is you don't, you can get vitamin D from the sun. uh, And it used to be recommended that yes, you go out specifically spend some time in the sun, getting vitamin D from the sun. But the truth of the matter is, if you are not getting enough vitamin D from the sun, you can get it from your food. You just have to make sure that you're having food that is rich in vitamin D or um, taking vitamin D supplements. Um, Oftentimes when you're deficient in vitamin D, we will replenish it by prescribing you vitamin D supplementation. So usually you can get vitamin D from foods like um, milk. Some people don't like um, cow's milk or don't drink it for one reason or another. But um, most of the other forms of milk like almond milk or soy milk, they are fortified with calcium and vitamin D. But you can get it from salmon, tuna, mackerel, liver, eggs. So there are other ways for you to get vitamin D in your body. Just make sure that you're getting 
you're getting enough from a food source. Um, and for kids, oftentimes, most of the cereals are fortified with vitamin D also. So you just want to make sure that um, you're eating foods that are going to give you vitamin D. Um, so the reason why the recommendation for um, sun exposure is not the same as it used to be is because of what I mentioned before, which is the risk, the cancer risk, the skin cancer risk. So it's not to say again, that you can't go out in the sun because you can, you should. Um, but when we wear our sun protector our sunblock or sunscreen, you're not going to get as much vitamin D from the sun because of the sunscreen. So you, you know, and so it sounds like, you know, it can be confusing for some people because it's like, well, doc, you want me to go, you want me to get vitamin D in my body. I could get vitamin D from the sun, but you want me to wear the skin protector. What am I really, what am I supposed to do? And my, you know, my rule of thumb on everything is everything in moderation, right? Don't spend too much time out in the sun absolutely wear your sunblock if you're going to be out for longer periods of time. Um, and then on top of it, make sure you're getting vitamin D in the food groups that you're eating. Okay. Those are ways that you can make sure that you are um, not getting vitamin D deficient. And some of the symptoms of vitamin D deficiency, and I'll just mention that because someone asked, um, some of the, the symptoms can be fatigue. Sometimes we just feel so drained and having low energy. And we're, um, you know, although sometimes hormones can be the reason for why we're feeling that way, vitamin D deficiency is actually one of the more common reasons to feel that way. Also, um, you know, vitamin D and calcium kind of work together in the body and it can Im impact your, um, muscle strength. Uh, and then those, those are the key things, but the major thing that the, that vitamin D does in the body is helping to build strong bones. So sometimes, you know, for people who are deficient and deficient over longer periods of time, you end up, um, they can end up having, um, thinner bones or increased risk for, uh, illnesses like osteomalacia or osteoporosis. Um, or excuse me, not Malaysia, osteoporosis or osteopenia, which is lower bone density. And as you age, those lower bone density can increase the risk for fractures. And so we will, you know, whatever age or stage you're at, whether we're talking about children, we're talking about teenagers, um, you know, the 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, it's not ever too soon or too late to make sure that you are taking in the right amount of um, the required vitamins and minerals for your body. For some of us, if you know that your diet is not adequate for um, the things that you, adequate for the vitamins and the recommended vitamins and minerals, then taking a vitamin supplement like a, or a multivitamin would actually be recommended in those cases. Otherwise, if you're getting it all from your food, then you don't necessarily have to take any kind of vitamin supplements, okay? Any additional questions for me? I am so happy to have you guys join me this evening. Um, and uh, so far, we've had some pretty good questions. And I would like to see if you guys have any other questions. Now, one of the other things that I, I tend to like to ask people are or is, if you have a topic that you want to hear me talk about or um, do a Q&A on, please send me a message in the inbox, um, in the chat box, excuse me, or on one of my social media platforms at Amaze Health. And that is on Instagram, Twitter, um, and Facebook, and then here on the YouTube channel. So basically send me a message if there is something that you really want to hear me talk about or you have questions about, because the goal is really to get you all educated so that you're making great decisions for your life so you can live 
a wonderful, amazing life and have amazing health. Okay. That is my goal here. I want you guys to be educated. I want when you guys go to the doctor that you're asking the right questions um, so that you can make the right choices for yourself and your family. So what additional questions do you have for me? Okay, so while I wait for um, some more questions, I'm gonna go ahead and check the different platforms to see if anyone else has anything that they would like to ask. So we have talked about, like I mentioned before, sun safety, we've talked about um, water safety, and we have talked about um, making sure you stay hydrated. We've talked about um, kind of avoiding bugs and what to do if you do end up with bug bites. Um, and then we've talked a little bit about vitamin D. And at, you know, at this point, I do, I want to make sure I'm not missing anybody's questions. Uh, and let's see. So the other thing that I wanted to mention too is in this country, we don't do it. We really don't do it that much. Um, I'm from the Caribbean and we, we definitely do it there a lot, which is when it comes to bugs, specifically mosquitoes, we use nets at night, um, nets around the bed to prevent the mosquitoes from biting us as we sleep. So that's one of the things that I would recommend um, if you are somewhere in a high mosquito area or if you're traveling overseas and you're, you know, not either not in a hotel or not in a place where um, you're being safeguarded, I would absolutely bring a net um, and sleep under a net. Uh, and that actually can be very helpful. And, you know, you can do it here also, so you don't necessarily have to wait until you go on on um, on vacation in order to do that. Also, you you can all all pre-treat or what we call pre-treat your clothes, um, which is basically spraying your clothes um, with insect repellent to ensure that you don't um, so that that to repel them. Cause sometimes people don't really want this stuff directly on their skin, whether they don't like how it feels or smells, whatever the case may be, you, you can spray your clothes. You can also look for, um, DEET free insect repellents. Um, the, the DEET free insect repellents, um, for some people, they feel like it's just, it's just as helpful, uh, like using like a eucalyptus type of um, deed free repellent um, because it's more natural. Um, and for you, for some of you, you like to use more natural products. Um, so I would be a little bit weary of that just because a lot of times um, or a lot of the studies that has been done on this has shown that they don't really work as well. Uh, and so the Cutter lemon eucalyptus one was the only deed free option that that was shown in studies to be really effective. And so I would just be careful about choosing other ones that are not approved or because um, they may not really work very well. And then you end up feeling like, well, why am I even doing this? Because the bugs are getting me anyway. So I would just be cautious about that um, if you're if you're using more natural products, and sometimes for some of the the different oils that are in these things, they actually will attract insects. Um, so I just I would I would just caution you on that, okay. Um, and then if you are wearing if you're hiking or anything like that, if you're wearing dark clothing. If you like to wear dark clothing, I would try to, to lighten it up a bit because number one, if you're wearing lighter colored clothing, you won't feel as hot, but also it's less places for the bugs to hide. So I would just do that. Um, and then I'm just trying to think of what other tips that I haven't discussed yet. Um, 
one of the ones that came up and a friend of mine said this to me the other day and I was like, oh, tell me. Um, one of the things that you can do is if you are an avid gardener is, you know, be strategic with your gardening choices, which basically means if you um, are gardening, there are some plants that will help to repel um, certain insects. And so, you know, I would just look into that as you garden to use those, use those kind of things to help as your um, insect repellents also. Okay. Any additional questions for me? You guys have been wonderful so far tonight. I'm so glad that we're on and welcome to anyone that is just recently joining. Uh, we have been talking about summer safety tips. I haven't decided yet, but I may be doing some additional safety tips because during, for the next month, partly because during the summer, um, that's when a lot of injuries, kids fall off the, the swing set and break a bone or they're playing sports and hurt themselves. So there are other, uh, other types of injuries that can happen or things that can happen during the summer that is actually more common in the summer months. But while you guys are out and about, um, try to make sure that you are following the safety tips that I mentioned before. Um, I'll go ahead and do a quick summary as I wait for um, any additional questions. Otherwise, we will wrap up um, after I'm finished with that. So, like I mentioned before, in you know, for sun safety tips, one of the major ones: wear your sunscreen, SPF 15, 30 or higher. Okay, wear a wide brim hat, UV sunglasses, and um, if you are going to use uh, insect repellent, you're going out and you know there are going to be bugs there, you're using insect repellent, make sure you apply your sunscreen first, wait for about 20 minutes, and then use the insect repellent like I mentioned earlier. Um, and then if you need to, or if you're hiking or things like that, you want to cover up your exposed skin, tuck your pants into the socks. If you find yourself in a situation where you notice that you've had ticks on you and you pick the ticks off, make sure you keep the tick um, uh, to show us, get an appointment, get seen, especially if you're in an area where, um, certain types of, uh, ticks cause certain illnesses like Lyme disease. Um, and then for the water safety tips, make sure you're not using alcohol. If you're trying to care for children around a pool or any body of water, make sure you're using fencing around residential pools. Um, and then, you want to be attentive, be attentive because you will not hear if a child is drowning or if a person is drowning, you won't hear them screaming necessarily because they it's usually very quiet and they go under and within a minute they can drown. So I would just, like I said, caution you, be, be attentive. Sometimes it's hard. We're out having fun and you take your eyes off what, for what feels like a second. Um, but I would just encourage you to be be attentive. Um, and we talked about making sure that you remain hydrated. That is of critical importance so that you don't get dehydrated or overheat or get to the point where you may potentially have a heat stroke or heat exhaustion, especially if you are out playing sports or running around. You may not you lose track of time and don't realize wait, I haven't drank anything. Come on, get the water, bring the water with you. For kids, get the water out, uh, icy pop, something. Make sure you guys are staying hydrated. It is of critical importance. I'm so glad that we were able to have this conversation because I, um, I, you know, these are things that I believe are very important as we go through these summer months. Um, things that have impacted my family personally, and things that I see in the office with children often and with adults often, okay? Uh, what questions, if any, do you all have for me? I'm going to go ahead and check all the social media platforms one more time, um, and you all let me know if there are any questions. You can type, go ahead and type them directly into the chat box, and I will answer them for you. Any additional questions for me? So 
If there are no additional questions, I am going to go ahead um, and wrap up for tonight. I, you know, I thought these were important topics. I thank you all for those of you who have joined me. I really appreciate it. Um, I have just checked all my social media. It doesn't look like I missed anyone. For those of you who have not been able to either type anything in um, or if you can message me, please do so. If you have um, any topics that you want me to talk about, uh, please let me know. I will be happy to address if I can. If it is a very, very specific topic that um, you just have a question about, you message me and I'll let you know if it's something that I can answer versus, um, you know, these are whether it's something you can touch base with your primary care doctor about. I'm so glad that we had this conversation. I am taking a break from doing the longer, um, the kind of the longer videos on YouTube. So I'm only doing the short um, three tips each week until the end of the summer. And then for the longer discussions, I'll pick that back up in the fall again. And I will base it off of your comments and the things that you guys want to hear about. Okay. I'm so glad you, you joined me today. So for everyone that has been listening, thank you so much for joining again. I will be back again next month, fourth Monday, every fourth Monday at 8 p.m. Um, we are doing these Q&A sessions, and it's always about that topic for the month. Um, if you guys want to hear more about specific medical issues, let me know. If you want to hear more about ways to navigate the healthcare system, which is pretty much how I started this off, then we can talk about that also. But I want to do things that are going to be fruitful and productive for you. Okay, so you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, and we will talk again soon. Um, check out my next video next Monday. Um, and be sure to leave comments and likes and share with someone um, the information, okay? Have a great night. Stay blessed.